Uh -huh. Hey, the radio, the crew is far from slow. The light's no longer yellow. Ready, steady, go. Crank it up. Crowds all on their feet, not one bothered by the heat. Imagine them in the driver's seat. Checkered flag would be sweet. Crank it up. Oh, it's racing. 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 Everybody. Introducing RS30 Ultra. The first sim racing wheel and pedals designed by a professional championship racer. Officially licensed by Microsoft, RS30 brings next level realism to your racing sims. Sense the road, know your vehicle, and get faster lap times as you tear through the track. Dual helical gear motors give you more torque than traditional gear drive motors with the same smoothness and quietness of a belt drive motor. Experience a stunning 6 newton meters of torque, the most torque per dollar than any other wheel, and fast, accurate feedback with zero dead zones. Feel every nuance and know exactly when you're understeering, oversteering, or losing traction. Spring-loaded pedals give you responsive throttle modulation and brake progression for absolute control and precision, just like the real thing. Two additional pedals can be used as clutch and e-brake, or as pedal-free throttle and brakes. A rotation switch lets you easily toggle between simulation racing and arcade-style racing. Even the diameter of the wheel is calibrated to exact race car specifications. And an easy share button lets you save and share your best laps with a simple push. From the metal build to the suede wheel and steel pedals, every detail is dialed to give the entire system a high-end feel. Get better, go faster, win more, and enjoy every second of it. With RS30 Ultra, you'll race like a pro and feel like one too. RS30 Ultra by GTR Simulator. Go fast. Looking for a new PC or an upgrade to your current one? Look no further than Ford Entertainment Group, your home for the best quality and value in new, pre-built, and custom PCs at the lowest price guaranteed. We have affordable PC solutions for any budget, with custom builds starting at $595. Even the pros turn to Ford Entertainment Group to get them up and running. With valued customers from all over the world, it's easy to see why Ford Entertainment Group is the most trusted brand in custom PCs. I wanted to save my awesome subscribers the most money when they started their sim racing journey. Well, I searched high and low for the best deals. 
you know, I'm so proud that Jeffrey and I have partnered up so I can spread the good news about where to get the lowest price on a high-quality computer. Feel confident when buying from us with the FEG Satisfaction Guarantee. Get yourself on track today by visiting us online at FEGPC.net. Kicker Gamer 2, what you see and what you hear is what you feel. Butt Kicker, the future is feeling. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it hasn't been too long since we've seen you last here on the show, but tonight we are back live here at Talladega Super Speedway where it all began last season and now it all begins again for season five of the Battle of the Metal Racing League Cup Series. This is the season opener here at Talladega Super Speedway presented by GTR Simulator. Hi again everyone, I am Christian the Crusader Shriver and welcome back here to Talladega Super Speedway tonight. We're going to go 50 laps to the distance here, seeing 20 of the best drivers of Pedal the Metal Racing League Cup Series go at it with one another here to represent and field in not just of their country and not just of their land, but also to represent themselves as well as all the great people that have come out here tonight to watch some hard-throwing action-packed racing events presented by our great sponsors and great people that have brought to you here up on our show. You can see them all in the top right corners of your screen sure to give them a thank you and a big a little bit of love out there like we have all like we will be doing throughout this events and throughout these seasons we man we cannot do it without them we cannot thank them enough so as we get ready to finish up right now qualifying is still underway here time elapsing down on the track here as you see there's only about 28 seconds left on the clock here before we enter into the lap portion of our race this is a long drive long hard fight 21 drivers have clocked in it looks like tonight here so yeah, Talladega Super Speedway, that's a lot of drivers with a lot of antithesis on trying to push these things to their limit because tonight the Cup Series, these are the Gen 6s. These are extremely, extremely difficult to get a push off and get a run with. And I think if anything, it's going to really play down to the best of both worlds and really show who is the better of the two. And really just see who can outwit and outlast the other as we prepare now to do battle here tonight. We are ready and yeah, we are set. The only, there's only one thing left to do, and that's get this crazy train on the roll. So let's head it down here. Racing order now has presented. We're getting the grid order now ready to set in. Presented by D-Dub Button Boxes here tonight. Here is how we start them on the pole. Christopher Jordan is your fastest qualifier in the 78. Is outside. That'll be Matthew Hopford, the 84. Run number two is Dennis Warrens, and the number 90 is outside. Kevin Bullock in the number 62. Row number three is going to be Tom Lanier in the 23. It is outside. Dustin Sonaker in the 66. Row four is Cindy the Closer Taylor in the 70. Right outside. That's the 42. Kevin Winker. Row number five. We're going to see that be Brandon Pike. The 22. It is outside. The 20 of Jeffrey Oaks. Row number six is going to be Chantel the Throttle Pottle in the 5. Right outside. The 27. Corey Reed. 
Row number seven, it's going to be Robert Dud Dud Dudleyville, Dudley the reigning defending champion. And the 49 is outside the 72, Jeffrey Todd Tufts. Row number eight is going to be Dan the Man Miglin. The 31 is outside the 99, Wally Bab. Row nine, Jason Henry in the three, and it is outside. It'll be Kevin Baker in the 87. Final starters, Robert the Rattlesnake on the 21, it is outside. Philip Brown, the 17, and finally, Michael Pratt rounds out the field in the 45. Race fans, they've come from all walks of life. They've come from all different parts of the countries and the world. You wanted to see the best. You wanted some hard racing. You came to the right show. You came to ETM Racing TV to watch the best of the best. Go out of here tonight. We are ready to go down and throw down right here and now. The drivers lead them off with the pedal of the metal racing league banners on their hook on the top of their spot on the top of their hoods on the top of their worlds. The GTR simulator roll goes on the corner panels. The D the D dub boxes on the back on the sides as well. And of course, all across their sponsors, every car has those title tags on each one of them. They will be representing each of the sponsors that help brought to you this race, this show throughout the events and throughout the times. They come down the front straightaway this time by We Are Ready to go at it and throw down at last. That's how they get Super Speedway for the Season 5 race season opener. They will bring it off to this race start zone. Here we go. The butt kicker restart zone will set the zone, set the pace. It's time to go racing. Season 5 is underway. Out of the gate, they'll have to charge off onto that turn two area there. Try to get a run there on the outside quickly if they want to make their way up to the front immediately. There's going to be the one thing you're going to have to watch for all night long is the pushing and shoving. A lot of these drivers will have to do just try to get the draft lines to work. The bottom end is generally where you can see most drivers trying to work their end magic off of, trying to make their move or two. The question is, will they be able to get enough of that? As you see already, the five of Chantel bottle, a lot of damage there on the front end. I don't know how bad that'll affect their front end. But it seems to be doing a number on her already. We'll see if maybe she can bring it back into pit road. She's slowing down badly here on the front straightaway. On board here with a rattlesnake rubber car, the number 21, right side by side in between with Dan, the man of England. And then you see that 99 as well. Wally Bab right in front of him. A little three wide salute in between. Kevin Baker in between there. Baker looking for a run on the outside. Thinks he's got the run. Thinks he's got the momentum. But he does not have the speed and technique to get ahead of him just yet. Very early in the race there, buddy. You got a lot of work to do. On board here with Jeffrey Osas. And last season, second place driver here. He really put up a fight in the last half. Winning up about three out of four races. Coming to the end of the wire, he had a lot of he had a lot of headaches and a lot of heartaches in the previous seasons, but this season really made a number, made a name for himself as Jason Henry, the number three. A little bit of problems down there through the corners. He ends up going into the infield. He's already has lost a lot of time. They will have stage breaks in between though. Stage one, stage ten, or excuse me, stage one will be at lap ten, and then lap 
20 will be stage 2. After that, there is no more give me there are no money help. You better get out there and figure out how to run with the best of them. Jeffrey Todd Tusk, the 72, the all black designed up machine trying to put a little bit of work down there for the LBT balance for 72. They'll march their way off across the deck here out of turn three and four. The number 90 right beside him, that's Dennis Warrens and that D-Dub, Beverly Camaro. We go on board here with Jeffrey Todd Tusk representing one of the four drivers from the Rock. He's from the Canadian lands of Newfoundland. It's good to see the fellow Newfoundlanders come back out here and put up a fight here. Four of them representing Canada here tonight. Corey Reed, the 27, the 72, and Jeffrey Todd Tufts, Dennis Warrens in the 90, and then the five of Chantel, the throttle bottle. They are all representations of that as we got a little bit of problem down there. Matthew Hofford is in the infield. Problems for the 84. We've got a caution. And that leads us to the PTM Instant Replay, brought to you in part by our good friends over tonight at uh, Gearhead Coffee. It's going to be interesting to see what exactly has transpired here coming down that front straightaway then into turn one and two. Take a look at this. Got a little three wide salute action pulling in the back. Look right in between there. You see that big red, white, and blue color scheme, the 84. Here's what happens. You see Kevin Baker's rising up a little. Maybe a little love tap in the 62. It's hard to really tell from this angle. Yep, right there. There he is. 6-2 of Matthew Hoffer getting turned around there. Unfortunately, had nowhere to go. And the 62 just completely got him good there. We're taking a look at it from another angle just to make sure. Watch it very carefully. Drives it in up. Pulls it around a little three wide and pushed and shoved and ends up taking him out for the ride. their way back into the pack here everyone getting lined back up that was your ptm instant replay brought to you by again by our good friends over tonight by gearhead coffee yeah so far it's been a wild one here to say the least everyone all over the place trying to find some openings or two how long can they keep up for this one we find out when we return tonight's race ladies and gentlemen has been brought to you in part by our good friends over at gtr racing simulator welcome to the future gtr racing simulator it's not that we broke the mold we just never used one by D-Dub Button Boxes. Quality button boxes made your way. D-Dub Button Boxes always has you covered. By the Butt Kicker. Best of performance on feeling real tracks of the virtual world. The Butt Kicker. Feel what you've been missing. And by Gearhead Coffee. Whether you're wrenching on your vehicle in the home garage or servicing customers at your automotive repair or dealership, Gearhead Coffee provides a unique premium coffee that keeps your motor running. Right about now, after all the uh, sleepless nights I had working on everything and getting set up for this one, I think uh, maybe that Gearhead Coffee helped me out a little bit, I will say. I definitely had a little bit of a thing or two with that Ignition brand. That was some good stuff. Good to see you all coming on board here tonight. Good to have everyone tuned in as well. Jerry King saying, darn, I wish I was racing. Raymond Custon Sr. saying, I'm ready. And Emily Miglin coming on board. Taylor Auten saying, go Arch. Rooting on for Mr. Philip Brown here tonight. Great to have you all on board here tonight. So everybody getting fielded back into position here. Looks like we're getting the word. The uh, 62 will have to go to the back. He's been a naughty boy out there. Ellie Miglin saying some really great car designs out here tonight. Yes, indeed. There's a lot of awesome stuff out here to say the least. You can see some of these sweet looking rides. You got the Piles Raps 23 on Tom Lanyard. They got a little bit of a design going on that 78. Uh, some producers, give me a closer look on that one, please. 
All right, that's better. Let's take a look around here. Let's see what we got. Ooh, look at this. A little rowdy energy on that 78. And you can see all the awesome sponsor designs on that one here. You can see all they are designed up in between. Awesome looking rides there to say the least here. And that is Christopher Jordan driving that one out here tonight. Looks like a little bit of a throwback here, if you will, up on the uh, end for Robert Kahn. I'm spying a little... Oh, a little Matt Benedetto out there. The quick lane machine, motorcraft, Ford Mustang. Yeah, I love these drone cans, by the way. They, they seem to do us some good when they can get them working right. Awesome looking right there on that quick lane. Let's take another look at some of our other ones here. We've got quite a few out here tonight. We saw earlier on Hofford uh, took a little damage there, but very awesome looking right there. you got the National Conceal and then CCA Association machine. Awesome looking ride there on that beast. All chromed out, the blue and red, the old red, white, and blue. Now you can't go wrong with that now. Come on now, my friends. Robert W. coming on board here and saying Dennis Warren says she had up tires, pull him in the tech shed. <laughs> uh, I don't think he's totally any more tires. They only get three sets of tires extra with the four they've already got on, with the, well, the four tires they got on there, my friends. So nice try. those that are new here and have never tuned on in with us before, first off, thank you so much for coming on board here with us at PT Racing TV. We hope you'll enjoy the show here tonight. And if you do enjoy the show, then like and follow us up here on Facebook and our YouTube. And we'll have this race right after. So please do subscribe there if you would to help support the channel, help support our show. And we've got a lot of things we've been working on behind the scenes. You have absolutely no idea about that. We're trying to make even better, make this show the best it can possibly be. So we certainly... Hope to get it to there one day, but until then, I cannot reveal all my secrets. I gotta be a little quiet out here. Speaking of being a little quiet out here, that five is Chantel's model bottle, that uh, GTR racing simulator, Matt Mills racing machine. Sure, we a little bit quiet out here, despite that uh, design not being so quiet. That is a loud paint scheme I'm seeing right there. Awesome looking beast right there. The sharp knee and all that. Right now we're ready to get back to it here, guys. Ken Crawford saying, what a good field tonight. Going to be a good one. So far, it has been. We'll see if they can keep it going. A lot of time left. A lot more racing to go. All right, race fans, here we go. Let's get them back underway here. Down the front straightaway. They'll lean them back off. And you know what time it is. It's time to get these guys back up and running, is it not? Coming back off to the green flag, charge them off. Whoa, 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 the 78 didn't even go. The 78 of Christopher Jordan did not get off the line. Troubles for the 78 out of the gate. And now everybody's scrambling, just trying to find a way to get around all of them and trying to find some speed underneath their hood. The leader's going away. Stage break will be incoming here shortly, but right now Tom Lanier, Corey Reed, and Dan Bigland have the advantage out of the gate on the back straightaway. They'll lead him down off the back stretch here. The number 31, Dan, the man, Bigland, trying to show why he can be the man and put a fight up ahead of the 23. The bottles wraps, number Chevrolet Camaro of Tom Lanier trying to fend him off. On board here with him as you see him working the throttle, working the foot, working everything he can on that bottom lane. That's the one thing we told about earlier. The drafting on these cars is extremely difficult. Pushing and shoving will be necessary, and drafting will be extremely crucial to surviving around here. There are no runs and guns. No, this is literally you better have a partner, and then you better have about five more right behind you if you want to have any chance. There is ways to get around the outside, but you got to make sure there's a good charge up there too. We've seen it before where it can get very difficult, very challenging just to make work, right? And remember, these cars do not get too many instant repairs either. They only get three, so they have to be very careful about that. Or actually, I don't even think they get three. I think they get two this season. Yeah, they only get two this season. Excuse me, I was right. I'm already kind of messing up on this season. What am I doing down here? Whoa! Where did the 42 come from all of a sudden as Jeffrey Dot Tufts almost gets himself into a bit of a pickle there. The 42 of Kevin Winker, holy cow, did he just butt shoot through a grab or two. As the caution flies, we are under stage break. Stage break has at last come.
So our first stage of the night here will result in pretty much kind of a wild necessary finish there. Tom Lanier will win the stage, so he is your stage one winner. And a big victory there for him. And in all honesty, I got to believe that's a good start to his season and a good start to his moment, to his confidence, if you will. May have been short and sweet, but then again, that's how most things are these days. So stage one winner coming away with the victory. We'll see if he's able to continue that momentum and continue that strength on. When we come back, more action to be had. Stay tuned with us here on Pizza Racing TV. Well, the race also tonight here has been presented and brought to you in part by our good friends over at, at Ooze Motorsports. Don't think we are cheating because you think you're fast. By LPT Palette. Get a pallet. Get a pallet made, uh, not, or uh, got a pallet not up to top, top shape. Call up LBT Pallet. We got you covered. By Ford Entertainment Group, PC.net. Matching your want with your wallet. They will always work with your needs to get the best PC at the right price. By Matt Mills Racing Team. Best seeing teams out there are sponsoring and supporting Battle Mill Racing League this season. And if you want to help support Matt's journey, follow him up on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and check out his merchandise line on Facebook. By, and by Matt Man's Maintenance. You want it done right? Call a man. So field right now stretch back out. Everybody looking to uh, get squared away here. So again, this was not a uh, race caution. This was a stage caution in this case. So stages are set now. Everybody looking to field back in the run and in the zone. Everybody fielding back around here. And I was told earlier today by some of the drivers that they may have had some troubles getting some of the schemes up and running here tonight. Something going on with training paints on their end, they said. So they said next week they will get everything fixed up and done right, which definitely can give them credit for at least trying out there. I will say that much. But I will ask this real quick. When you're a painter, how do you forget to get the number put on the car? Now, don't get me wrong. I know who it is. I got my transponders down there, but I don't know how on earth you're supposed to tell Corey Reed's 27 when he doesn't even have the 27 on his car. Corey, I love you, buddy, but, man, you got to get that 27 on there ASAP, brother. The fans in the crowd may not know who you are with that with that scheme, but it is still awesome looking ride, a pretty cool looking design, I must say. So hopefully it'll last out and work all right for him in this case. And again, this is really the only, the first race of the season. They got a whole list of races coming up in the events and in the shows. Next week, we take you down to Chicagoland Speedway. And then the week after that, before we take a week off, it'll be down at Nashville Super Speedway. And let me tell you something. If you guys missed Nashville Super Speedway last, just a couple of nights ago with Backfire Sim Racing, oh, did you miss the show? That track can give you a heart, can give you a heart attack as much as it can be your best friend. And it certainly was a great battle there and a great race to be had. It's going to be interesting to see what they can do in just a couple of short weeks. But for now, we are at Talladega Super Speedway, and drivers are getting ready to line back up into position. You see the pace lights on the truck come off. That means one thing. We're getting ready to get back to the action, get going, get, get done quick again. No hassling around here, folks. It's either go, go get racing or just get out of here. We don't play these games here. Into the closer tail. Looks like she's got a little bit of a space design on that 07 machine. I'm kind of, I'm kind of getting an 80. I'm kind of get like an 80s NASA vibe on that thing. Wow, that is an awesome looking ride. Robert Dudley getting a 49 rescheme up of his uh, Mercury Penny, loving memory of Penny Dudley. Was told earlier today by uh, Robert there was some troubles going on in the family, and awesome. We wish you nothing but the best of luck down there, bud. Hope everything is okay. Your PTM Race TV wish you guys nothing but the best, and hopefully everything is going to be all right when all is said and done. These are not the times to be having none of that stuff. But right now, enough of that nonsense, and back to the action. Here we go, onto the green flag, and char start the charge, get them going again. To lap 20, they'll go, and then it'll be a 30 lap, it'll be about a 30 lap run to the very end. It's conquer and win, that's all you can do. 
And it looks like out of the gate, the D7 did not get the start he was looking for. Might have missed a shift coming off the line. That's very common there on the front straightaway is missing a shift because you forgot where the speed is. The 90 now, Dennis Warrens, the D-Dub machine, looking to possibly put up, put, up, put up pedal to the metal, put a full throttle assault down on the track as he goes right up against with the rattlesnake, Robert Kahn, on board here with Dennis. Dennis out of the Canadian region, uh, not one of the Newfoundlanders, but representing Canada nevertheless in his own scheme, in his own region. Not awesome to say the least, as he's already got a run coming up there on the 21, but Khan managing to use his wit and use his tactics like a rattlesnake strikes. Good problem. He strikes up top and takes over the race lead. We have ourselves a new leader as Tom Lanier will now have to find a way back around him. I feel like you're gonna have to watch all day long as well is when you get that run you get a little bit of pull do you try to help out your teammates or do you think about yourself if I'm a driver right now I'm not even thinking about myself I'm trying to just make sure I keep myself out of trouble I'm trying to help everybody else out and stay away from getting into any more other obstacles that I've already been in now again that's just me really but it can go on both ends it can go a little bit differently depending on how you see it Make this television debut here tonight. That is the number three, Jason Henry. And all honesty, I don't think I've really seen anybody in this league use the number three in quite some time. I think it's been a very long time since we've seen the three car actually ran out there. Some of the guys and gals out there told me it's a little bit sacrilegious to be driving that scheme. And I kind of understand why, but at the same time, if you're out here running with the best of the field, why would you not want to run it here as we go on to the blimp cam here? We're charging it up here with the gear, with the gut by the butt kicker. Who's more sports blimp cam out here? Yeah, but double sponsor here tonight. What do you know? And right in the back here, everybody leaning off. Kevin Bullock, the 62, starting to give a little bit more room, maybe looking for opportunity to strike later on. I don't think he's worried about right now. I think he's more focused. I'm trying to take these guys out later. Down to the single file car draft here. This is where you're going to see a little bit more often than you really want to, or maybe you might like to in this case. Every driver has to keep the distance, have to keep the speed. Again, 21 of the best drivers in the Cup Series have come out here tonight to start the season off and start it off strong. Whereas most would go to Daytona. Nope, we're going to Talladega to start it off. Running it down on the end here, the Rowdy Energy 78 of Christopher Jordan trying to keep up with the distance, trying to fight it out with, Christo with uh, Jeff Michael Pratt there in the 45 as the 42 Kevin Winker. Extremely hard on the throttle, looking for some aggression down there as you got a little bit of movement in the back of the back. Here comes the 90 and the 5 and Dan Miglin trying to work with both of them but ends up just sneaking his way back into the bottom. Chantel, the throttle bottle, the Super League model season champion, looking to try and defend her crown and show that she can run with the best of them in all series. She has a few Xfinity wins, had one truck series win, had a couple, had a one ARCA and a late model. The only thing she hadn't done was win a Legends race, and that is it. She's won in every single other division inside the race, inside the racing world, and she's currently broadcasting up on the Pottles Racing End, so be sure to go ahead and give her a little bit of love and show her up, show how she's doing it out there. On board came here with the 27 of Corey, ready to see the fellow Newfoundlander trying to work with his team, trying to work with the crew. Yeah, again, there are no teams in these divisions, there are no uh, helps as well. You only get the iRace expires, and you only get yourselves to work with. You either do or do not so win out here. That's the only way you can get it done. Coming on board here tonight, Charlie Anderson saying go Kevin Winker, number 42. Oh, a little bit of love down there for that 42 machine here tonight. You'll see if maybe he can continue to, stre to strengthen on. He's right now running in the top half here, I believe. Trying to find him here. Oh, there he is. He's the top five, actually. He's up in that 42. There he is. There's the Culver Leaf, number 42. 
And if I'm not mistaken, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't that the old Kyle Larson's car and the old scenes he used to do, or is that Matt Kenseth's ride? You guys let me know. I have, I'm have i not for sure on that one. And I'll tell you one thing that is for sure, though. Robert Dud -Dud Dudleyville Dudley wants to try and defend his championship crown from last season as he gives old Wally Map in the 99 a little bump and rag, a little toe tag, if you will. I think he was trying to test his patience, trying to test the waters here on a move or two. Couldn't find it there. But the 20 of Oaksy is looking on the inside, looking for a run. Christopher Jordan starting to branch out, trying to find a little bit of help as well. This is one thing that really, you know, despite the fact he can't really bolster up as much speed anymore, I think it also kind of makes it for an interesting run is when you have to push and shove to get up there. Really test drivers and makes them really work for it as everybody has to come to a crawl and slow down. Stage break. And this will be the final stage. Next time out, we're going to go for the full length run. And I believe coming to the line, Wally Bab was your stage winner. So your stage number two winner is going to go to Wally Bab. And Wally Bab, I got to believe right now, is dead set focused on taking that into consideration and taking that into full comprehension because now he's going to have to figure out the strategy of going into pit road and also what does he do with the tires and how does he handle the and how does he handle the damage on the car well we'll see how everyone handles here as we get ready to finish out this race here tonight race fans do not go anywhere we'll be right back with some more action from p10 racing tv and battle of the metal racing league tonight's race also brought to you in part by our good friends over at barry town cleaners when you got yourself a mess, Barrytown Clearance can help fix that up. And by Paul's Reps, most affordable designs made your leisure. Paul's Reps always bring out the best designs in your library. Introducing RS30 Ultra. The first sim racing wheel and pedals designed by a professional championship racer. Officially licensed by Microsoft, RS30 brings next level realism to your racing sims. Sense the road, know your vehicle, and get faster lap times as you tear through the track. Dual helical gear motors give you more torque than traditional gear drive motors with the same smoothness and quietness of a belt drive motor. Experience a stunning six newton meters of torque, the most torque per dollar than any other wheel, and fast, accurate feedback with zero dead zones. Feel every nuance and know exactly when you're understeering, oversteering, or losing traction. Spring-loaded pedals give you responsive throttle modulation and brake progression for absolute control and precision, just like the real thing. Two additional pedals can be used as clutch and e-brake or as pedal-free throttle and brakes. A rotation switch lets you easily toggle between simulation racing and arcade style racing. Even the diameter of the wheel is calibrated to exact race car specifications. And an easy share button lets you save and share your best laps with a simple push. From the metal build to the suede wheel and steel pedals, every detail is dialed to give the entire system a high-end feel. Get better. Go faster win more and enjoy every second of it with rs30 ultra you'll race like a pro and feel like one too rs30 ultra by gtr simulator go fast With the Butt Kicker Gamer 2, what you see and what you hear is what you feel. Butt Kicker, the future is feeling.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, right now, currently, as we get settled back down after the final stage break there. Everybody looking to feel these drivers around, feel these cars back into play, back into position here, looking to possibly really bolster the momentum and show what they can do and how they will handle their nerves. Double file them up this next time. Bye. Here we go. Now Kevin Winker actually was the uh, number one guy out of pit road. He'll take the clover leap number 42 Chevrolet Camaro into the race lead. And, you know, again, we talked about it earlier, but with the fact they have to start on that green on that green start run, that could give a bit of an advantage there to Jeffrey Oaks if he's got some help. He'll need help from Christopher Jordan. Remember, Jordan earlier in the first stage, right before we ended that out, he had problems getting off the start. Said he couldn't get the car to run the way he was hoping for, and it ended up costing him big time. Well, the same thing happened here. That's the big thing. If it does, he's going to have to be very, very well aware that it can get pretty bad from here. They'll be just under the halfway mark so far. They'll be ready to file them back in, fire them up at once more. And then from here, it's just all about strategy and really tempting the times and everything in between. And remember also, folks, tonight, if we can, whenever we can, we will no longer have a time limit on these drivers. Yes, you heard that right. These drivers will go the full distance from green, white, to checkered. No more time limit issues anymore, in this, especially in this one. Unless we have something maybe that comes up afterwards, we will not have anything else to say on that matter. So for those at home that were wondering, no, we will no longer have that as long as nothing else intertwines or gets involved with the BTM Racing TV. And we have talked to Pedal the Metal Racing League, and yes, they said that it was very fair. They would like that. And if someone does kind of come in with that, then they will, you know, have to go that route. So, but nevertheless, they are no longer time limit. They have an extra hour to get this one fielded and finished in. And honestly, if you can't if you can't get 250 laps in for two hours in the race here, I think you might want to get things checked out with those cup cars because they may be running a little slow out there. But nevertheless, race fans, this is it. Final stage time. No holding back around here as they lead them off down to the butt kicker restart zone. This time around, we're going to go back to the green, back to the action, back to the heavy makers and heavy racing. Let me know down in the comments. Who do you think is going to take this one home tonight? We'll see now. Here we go. Back to the green. We're up and running. That's a hot start out of the gate there for Kevin Wink of the 42. Managing to break free of the trouble zone. That is that aerodynamic draft off the push. But the outside still has a lot of run coming. Oaksy looking for a little help there. Not getting it yet, yet. Philip Brown, the number 17 Toyota Camry, looking to also make his way up there with his fellow Toyota Camry colleague and Robert Dut Dut Dudleyville Dudley. Well, you see, while the Chevrolet 45 is all white with the schemes on design, that is Michael Pratt trying to hang in there as he makes his television debut. We're on board with him as he swings it straight down low. Says, hey, let's see where this one goes. And it looks like Cindy the Colts are tail inside. Like, oh, don't mind if I do. I'm going to sneak on the outside. Check that one over from you there, my friend. Welcome to Battle of the Metal there, kid. Oh, oh, you did not leave openings for the ladies. That's the one thing we were taught around here. Do not give them the opportunities to strike. Cindy Taylor and Chantel Bottle, they can give you a run for your money. And they have no trouble getting their bumpers in there if they have to. Down on the back straightaway, big crowd on hand here tonight to watch this from Talladega County, Alabama, here at Talladega Super Speedway. At the big race presented by GTR Simulator, Racing Simulators here tonight. So far on the game, on the go, no one giving an inch. It's just all do and don't, but that's right now the biggest thing I think they're watching for. They're trying to see and trying to eye is keeping out of trouble and keeping out of contention. Number 20, HendrickCars.com. Chevrolet Camaro trying to move up on the outside. Got a little bit of help. Got the number 07 of Cindy the Colton Taylor right behind him. We know those two have worked well before and helped each other out when it comes to drafts and comes to pushing these cars to their fullest potential. But now that they're in the Cup Series, how well do they handle the heavier machines? How, how well do they handle the harder equipment to drive? A lot that goes to stake here as we got trouble down there. Tom Lanyard crashing out. He's already headed into pit road. 
something gone wrong there for number 23 and what a tough break for Tom unfortunately not able to make it past where he wanted to go and where he wanted to do down across on the front straightaway here everybody looking for openings where they can find it some finding it everywhere else but now here look at the number five on the outside here comes a full throttle assault on the outside little help there from the rattlesnake her arch nemesis and Robert Conner have had some serious wars in the past, ranging from NASCAR Heat all the way to five, and now on to iRacing. Those two drivers, you want to talk about a rivalry that spans across platforms and decades? They've been at it for over four years, and I'll tell you one thing, they definitely do not give an inch even this amount of time later. Oh, my. Some of the new guys right now trying to work their way in, get up to the front. Dudley's trying to defend them all off, trying to show he's a reigning defending champion for a reason. He won the championship last season. He ended up getting a big, got a little bit of a trophy and a little bit of prizes in between all top five drivers. Get that here as we go into the three wide salute. Down the front straightaway. To the chopper can we go. And see this beautiful sensation of run and fury, but drivers progress and the speed in down. The 66 right now looking for a little run. That's my boy Dustin Sornicker Sparky. You may have heard him a lot in the broadcast booth. That's why I call him my boy. But he definitely has yet to still pull off a win or two when it really matters in quite some time. Last time he had a major win was back in Michigan National Speedway in the trucks division. That was back in season two. He managed to outsmart everybody on a long run setup and managed to actually outwit the time. And that's what got him the victory that night. Good friend, longtime colleague here, obviously, looking to hammer down, keep up with the distance, keep up the speeds here. 22 laps remain right now. Halfway done with this right now, Dennis Weep, Dennis Warren's on the out, on the middle, trying to weave his way around. The outside, I was going to say, Chantel throwing a bottle as a 17 of old Philip Brown. Well, he just put it right up into between them. Slows their run down completely in the power, the speed gone, and the five is now struggling to get it back. Everybody clattering around, trying to get out of this mess. Oh, there's going to be a three wide, double three, double five, three by three. Yes, sir. Way I made that sound sound like a restaurant sandwich or something. Like you get three, you get three by three of the meat, three by three of the cheese, you get three by three of the of the lettuce, tomato, onion, and you get a little bit of mayo on top, and that's what you call a sandwich. I don't even know what the heck I'm talking about anymore. I'll tell you what though, I'm very, very impressed right now with everyone's handling and everyone being a good set. Despite the trouble earlier, that one little hiccup, it seems as though they really have learned from their mistake and they've learned how to gain their ground to carry the momentums up. For Robert Dudley, the 49 Mercury Toyota Camry is doing everything he can to defend off and hold back the Cloverleaf 42 there. Kevin Winker, extremely aggressive off the start, been extremely aggressive since then. He's been hanging with these guys. I can tell you what he's trying to do right now. He's trying to weave and push and shove Robert out of his way. He's trying to help him get a little further ahead. But with only 20 laps remaining, there is only one thing left to do, and that's just fight to the top and give it everything she's got. Our good friend Damon McNeil has joined us in now. He says, wow, what a race. Damon, good to have you on board, sir. Great it once more here on our show. Kevin Bullock, the number 62, another new driver to our radar here in the season. Let's go on board with him, give a little bit of fame right now as he charges ahead to fight it out Michael Pratt. And those of those that have never been with us here on PC Racing TV, when I talked earlier about draft and aerodynamics of the car, one thing I really was kind of making very clear was the reason why I said it's very difficult to get the arrow to really push and work as much anymore it's because of the fact that a long time ago, iRacing never had that issue. They had basically a setup that would allow you to just cut through the air and cut through with speed, and you could do it in tangent draft, but if you had more to it, you could certainly build up a lot of run. Now, I will not criticize too much because the Xfinity and the Truck Series had that speed to still do it. But unfortunately for the Gen 6s and still kind of the Gen 7s right now, they have not, or the next gens, if you will, they haven't really yet 
figured out or perfected that in this case. They're still working on it. They told us earlier that, you know, we've been told on numerous occasions they were hoping it would be fixed and done by now, that being by the drivers. But, you know, everything obviously has to go with the simulator route. That's kind of the whole point of it is to simulate real life and simulate the world that evolves around NASCAR and not IndyCar, Formula One as well as even the Lucas Oil Off-Road Series in them. And if you ask me, they did a tremendous job getting that dialed in and getting that figured out time and time again. As I see some of the air drivers kind of popping in in between here, one of the returners from the new, from the last season, Brandon Pike in the 22 and the Pendoil Shell Machine. Good to see him back here as he rocks the Ford Mustang into the fight zone. Matthew Hoff with the 84, despite the damage he had earlier on. He doesn't seem to be too faced by that. He seems to be coming back up in the back. I think with right now the way we're planning this out, I think a lot of drivers are being very conservative. They're being very aware of the surroundings and they don't want nothing to do. We're trying to push, shove, and bang too much because they know if the big one is paused, they don't have very many instant repairs to use and just be get grateful with. That's the dangers you run here. Well, I wish you guys were here. I wish you could feel the momentum of the power and all that build up these drivers possess right now. This is just absolutely amazing. The sounds, the sights, the skies, everything. It's just beautiful down here at Talladega County. It's something you just cannot the life of me even begin to describe without truly just being there yourself and talking about it in your own way and your own and everyone else that is with you that day. On board there with the GTR series simulator number five of Chantel Throttle Bottle trying to build something up with her Matt Mills racing team. Machine as she goes right up for the outside looking for a runoff. Looks like she wants a piece of the 72 of Jeffrey Todd Tusk but the LVT pallets 72 says, no, ma'am, I do not give, I am not going to let chivalry die today, but in this case, it's racing. Chivalry don't exist around here. And Phillip Brown right behind both of them as well. Looks like a little bit of damage on the front end. Oh, that 17 may be kind of hard to tell, so I'll give you a better camera angle on it. Take a look at that right side of the car and look at the front bumper there. Notice the scrapes and bruises on that. That may be the factor. That's slowing down old Philip Brown, unfortunately, and giving him a hard time. Thankfully, though, it's only as the first race of the season. They've got 11 races still to go and plenty of time to strike it out and down and down with these guys. Kevin Waker, the 42, Clover Leaf, Chevrolet Camaro with only 15 laps to go, knows what must be done with the 10, to re on the 10 reaches. He'll have to fight for everything she's got. In the back of the pack here, the back straightaway. Now everybody looking through the field, looking for a run, looking for something, anything to help themselves out. With this being early in the season, I, get, I would think some of them may want to try and get some early points in, but I think really this is the factor that Talladega has brought to the table. This is really a track that really if you can keep yourself in play and keep yourself out of, at, from the out of bounds, I don't think there's really anything else to worry about. Remember, there's 21 drivers out here tonight. And unfortunately, Tom Lanier and Wally Babb both out at the moment. Troubles down there for both of them. And as I say that, it looks like Dustin Sonaker and uh, Wally Babb actually are going at it a little bit here. Dustin Sonaker a couple seconds back. Troubles for him. Looks like he went into pit road early. So, not sure. Maybe that was a strategy on his end or what he was planning. But... I don't know if I would have gone into pit road that soon, that quickly. Might not have been the smartest effort here. We'll see though, because right now, man, it could go either way. We don't, we don't have any idea what these drivers can do, or some of them, the new ones, Johnson could just come out here and shock the living daylights out of us. We wouldn't even know it. On board here with our number three, Jason Henry, and once more as Kevin Bullock right now, the 62 tries to hammer down, keep him away from the race spot. Top five, pretty close together here. If you will, less than a half a second separates them out from literally the from pretty much the first on to fifth. That's about what you would expect here, but again, I don't think a lot of them were expecting to be just single file drafting this much. 
It's all boiling down. It's all just getting intensified to that one moment, that one incident where somebody says, you know what, I've had enough. I'm going to the outside. I'm going to try and run it down. But I think now we just realized something too. Pit strategies do come into play here. Everybody heading for pit road. Easy going in, easy going in, easy, easy, easy. All right, everything looks good, looks good. A new rule to follow here this weekend as well. They will all have to go to the outside when they run this kind of track in. So they have to start outside, then go about three or five spots, then into pit road. So watch for drivers to go out and then back in. Looks like everybody did a pretty good job there, I must admit. That was probably one of the cleaner pit stops I think I've seen at Talladega. That's saying something, because that broadcast... What, how many times have we broadcast here at Talladega? Had have been more than at least twice. It looks like Kevin Winker and Dudley just went for a fuel in pits, and that's it. Winker's going to get the run on Dudley. Dudley trying to get him on the outside. They're not going to try and drive through the pit road, Erickson, and fight it out there, are they? Well, Dudley was thinking about it there for a minute. Oh, wait a minute. The three and Jason Henry... On the front straight, on the stretch outside of pit road, something gone wrong and a ride for the three. Hold on just a minute. What the heck happened here? What on earth has happened? Let's see right here. Did he just overclock the throttle? Oh, Dennis Warrens gets into a bit of a pickle there, a little scruffle. I'm not sure what happened to the number 90. We're gonna have to go back to the PTMS replay again, take a look at this one. Yeah, I, is, I mean, I get in that pit road is definitely a troublesome half for the for this kind of momentum. But oh, right there you see it. There it is. Dennis Warrens. He gets on the throttle and takes the three. He got into the throttle way too quickly. Did not realize where he was at and ends up tagging one of the other drivers. And now we're in a race to catch back up with these guys here. Everybody is back on the track and they're feeling this one down in and with only about 11 laps to go. They're all going to have to try and draft up and quickly to catch D Dudley and Winker. The downside for Winker and Dudley is if these guys right behind them get any kind of draft or any kind of run, they're going to pass them on the outside. There's only two of them where they got like six or seven of them and just pass them that easily. This is not good. If you're the top two, you better be very, very well aware when they're coming for you because this could get interesting. Everybody that got cleared out of pit road, back on the gas, back on the throttle. Tandem drafting going to be coming into play. All of the COTs of 2007. Yes, I brought them up. And no, we have not proceed. Actually, come to think of it, have we even had the car of tomorrow on this broadcast yet? And yes, iRacing still has them, so don't question us there. I don't know. I think it might be time to get them out. I think it might be time to finally broadcast them. Remember, our goal is still to see every race and as many drivers as we can before I retire that's my goal we want to get every single car every single track broadcast on the show at least once that is the goal somebody actually heard me out on that one too they sent me a I literally saw it later they sent me a dirt lane models here at Daytona and I thought to myself how did you get dirt lane models for running Daytona and I watched them like that's awesome. I don't know if I'm going to be able to broadcast that, but that is awesome. So somebody was listening in on that. For those that are listening, it really does mean a lot when you do comment and leave reviews and all that. So I, I can't thank you guys enough for that. But nevertheless, back to the action here as we currently are looking now down at the face of what could be the uh, the four horsemen, if you will, of this race. Kevin Bullock, Cindy Taylor, Jeffrey Oaks, and Dan Miglin, all four are going to catch up there and try to fight it out with the two, the, the duels, find their duels back here. It's going to be a duel of fate between these packs. And if the four cars can get ahead just enough in two laps, they're going to go to the outside and charge ahead. Then it'll be a matter of who can outsmart the other and who will get the better of the other. Coming off right now, Dudley and Winker, I got to guarantee you, they are communicating back and forth with the Spars. Like, all right, what do we do? What do we do? Like, where, where, what is the right time? What, what, what can we do to help each other out? We need to be safe here. Because they know that there's a couple of packs coming back up on them too here. Just about eight laps left remaining here. And you can see top five, no, excuse me, top six. Or, yeah, they've actually seven and maybe the 45 and Michael Pratt. The 99 there of Mr. Wallybab, unfortunately, is a lap down. And I don't think Wallybab realized he is a lap down. I don't think he's actually very aware of that. The Road Tech 99, Dan, 
Got a little bit of damage up and had to go into pit road. I don't think it worked the strategy as well as he was hoping for. Field will set him straight, send him cornered off again, and let's take him to the blimp camp because now here's a good look at what's coming up right behind the two leaders with only seven laps remaining. Give him one more good lap, and this one's over and done with. They'll catch him. This is bad, bad if you're the crew, if you're that crew right now. Here they come. Charging up, looking for the run. Here comes Bullock, here comes Cindy, here comes OC. You can see Dudley trying to block. And look at this, they're gonna stay down. Oaks and Miglet stay down. They don't run off. Bullock trying to get a run quickly to the outside. He's trying to hurry. He knows if he doesn't get up there now, it's too late. It's too late. He can't get the trap. It's enough for Winker to stay ahead. Oh, the drama ensuing there. I don't know if Bullock realizes what had transpired to him. It was too little, too late. I know he was looking in that rearview mirror and probably seeing what Oaks he was up to and what everybody else was doing. That has got to be infuriating as a driver. I know what it's like, but man, you just got to keep going. You got to push everything you can. You got to put the pedal to the metal and hope for the best. So right now, top six, Bullocks, Taylor, Miglin, O.C. Dudley, Winker, they're all in the hunt for this one to win. Meanwhile, the guys right behind them, they feel as though they're too far behind, and it seems as though they're 10 seconds away from the race leader. So now, well, you're going to have two races for the price of one. But they got to be careful out there. Remember, those iRacing cautions are on. So if you cause one, it's game over. They'll pretty much turn into a green-white checkered attempt. And believe me when I say that could get gnarly. Kevin Baker trying to sneak his way back down below. He's trying not to lose too many laps here. But, I mean, at this point, it's kind of all but done and over for him and his crew. They'll have to just kind of cut this one off and change it up to another race. Back down and across the field here. We're down to five laps to go. Flight went hold up the high five. The clouds starting to dimmer as well. We're going into the late afternoon. This could get dangerously close tonight if we're not careful. You can see the clouds, the skies. It was, you know when it was bright and sunny out there? Yeah. That's one thing you gotta love about eye racing. It really makes real life seem like it is going on in this world. The clouds standing off. They shake the sky in, the shades up a bit. The world around us just gets a little darker. And in your mind's sake, your soul becomes just a little bit hotter and your and your heart starts beating just a little bit faster. Four laps to go, and I guarantee you coming with two to go, somebody is going to go for the run. Well, apparently that someone thought it was two laps already. Here comes Kevin Bullock once again. Bullock trying to make a move off there, looking for a run, looking for a little bit of momentum. Can't quite get ahead of Miglin. He's trying to get ahead of him. Oaksy helping him out a little bit on the outside, trying to help each other here. But again, a four-car draft better than two, and you're seeing it right here and now. Absolutely impressive stuff to say the least, though, man. Last season, we had so much trouble trying to keep these cars at bay and trying to keep everyone in check. This season, well, I think we got ourselves a good one on our hands here, my friends. If you're not tuned in now, you're missing one heck of a race. We're coming to final three laps to go. And speaking of the three, Jason Henry up on the outside. The three's going to have a lot of problems. Kind of digging himself out of this hole. The cloud digging wise, no big deal, though. He's still got quite a few races ahead. Yeah, I'll give credit, though, for Chris, too. Bullock and Oaksy, they're going to try and actually work together to get around Miglin and Cindy. And if Henry can catch up, he may be able to have a little fun here. This could be a long shot, but I feel like if Dudley makes one big move, he's going to go for it on the outside. Winker trying to defend him off. And it looks like Bullock going to go side by side, nearly touching each other's tips there. No corner touching here. No problem there. Right now, though, here it is. Final two laps. Green flag high in the air. We've got two to go. Flying man waving this one off. He's saying to everybody, you better be ready. Here comes the white. We trade green in for white just a little later. Bullock getting a piece there from Miglin. Miglin going to drive it back down. Bullock right there with the 31. They keep it clean. Right off the back straightaway. It seems as though this is going to be anybody's guess which one will get the better. But at this point, unless you get four of them drafting up together, you're not going to catch the two in front of you. 
Wanker, his first television debut. Could it be his first win of the season? Robert Dudley looking for his first career high of the season. Never won a season opener here on BT Rich TV. Will that change here now as the white flag charges ahead? White flag is out for the 42 and the 49 with the four right behind him. Presented by the butt kicker right now. Feel what you've been missing. It's time to see what we've been missing here all along. But it's time to get their runs going. Start to kick some butt out there, my friends. Dudley is going to full throttle assault this charge. He's coming for him on the outside. I guarantee it. Will Winker try to block or will he just let him go there and try to work a finish? They're coming across out of turn three. Downtown turn four. We'll send him downtown into this one. All the way from Birmingham, straight down into the Athens, and then on to Talladega County. But out of turn three and four, Winker's got the run. Can Dudley get to the inside? No, he's not going to have a time. Kevin Winker, in his television debut, wins at Talladega. And a strong run to end this one out. Jeffrey Oaks gets third. He starts the season off strong. Fourth going to Cindy the Calder Taylor. Fifth to Dan the Man Miglin. What a race. Woo! Harley Dyson, get that butt kicker going. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Harley, he did. He did, but it wasn't enough tonight. Kevin Winker, the 42. Give the man his due. He is your race winner here tonight at Talladega. And this one might be the sweetest one because it's the first time he's ever been on the show and the first time he's ever parked the cup car into victory lane but coming next week when we get to chicago land can he ride the wave of success and keep the momentum alive only time will tell and i think robert dudley was just going over to say congrats man you win this one next time i'm getting you unbelievable for those at home that say you can't get a good race of talent without a bunch of wrecks and cautions I think this race kind of proved you can do that and then some. We had in a tremendous battle and a great race with a little bit of drama in between. Only one wreck and unfortunate incident everywhere else though. Clean as a whistle. Excellent job and great driving by all involved here tonight. Take it down now to our D-Dub button box race results here tonight. Your race winner, Kevin Winker, the 42, wins this one. Second going to Robert D D Dudleyville. Dudley in the 49 is outside. Uh, excuse me, Jeffrey Oaks getting 20 in the third, getting toward the 24th. So sending the close Taylor in the 7th, 5th to Dan the Man Miggle in the 31, 6th to Kevin Bullock in the uh, 62. Good showing from him. Coming away 7th, Matthew Hoffer, great run to the end there, fighting from that crash in the 84. 8th going to the Rattlesnake, Robert Kahn. Good to see him fighting it out the 21. Ninth going to Michael Pratt in the fort with the 40 in the 45 good showing as well and then the tenth place going to Chantel Throttle Pottle rounding out with the ladies here in the top ten great showing from the girls and from the new drivers excellent performance to say the least here great stuff and we are not done yet we still gotta go ahead and talk with our drivers here so do not fade away do not fade out race fans I'll be right back with you enjoy these commercial messages while we get back to you here from PTRS TV with the top three. race fans now here joining me into the booth into the crowd here ladies and gentlemen may i introduce to you your race winner it's aladega this is kevin winker and his television debut kevin congratulations what a showing and a victory to say the least for you and your crew you certainly had to put this one down in the hard charge zone to get this victory yeah i was expecting a bigger run from that second pack i me and uh, i think the 49 got out on that green flag stop and I figure we were sitting ducks. I don't know what happened to them guys behind us. They caught up and then there was this me and the 49 there the last lap. So 
It certainly was indeed here, my friend. But, uh, you know, I mean, with the fact that the draft and all that was kind of kind of all over the place and kind of in between here, I, I got to ask you, what, what was probably the toughest part besides that draft that it took with running around with these guys here tonight? I mean, I, I run a lot of point tracks. So I kind of know how these go. But, I mean, yeah, with, with these cars, it's just hard to pass compared to, like, the trucks or the ARC cars. So your track position in these cars is really key at the point tracks here. It certainly is indeed, but nevertheless, you are running away with the victory here tonight. So I got to ask you, my friend, who got you here into victory lane tonight? Uh, well, I guess you could say my driving skills, pun intended. But uh, just want to thank my fiance for letting me I race. Um, without her, I couldn't do this. And then you guys in the broadcasting booth, I've watched a couple of your broadcasts in other races, and they're amazing. So keep doing it. And then uh, this league. First race in this league, and I'm liking it so far. So, well, we certainly hope to see you back here once again here on PT Race TV and also here with Battle of Metal Racing League. But nevertheless, congratulations on a win here tonight. We hope to see you very soon at Chicago Land Speedways. Sounds good. Thank you. Have a good night. You too, ladies and gentlemen. The number, the race winner here tonight in the number 42 car. Give it up for Kevin Winker. All right, let's take our second place driver now into pit lane. We are talking with the 49, Robert D D Dudleyville Dudley. And uh, Robert, my friend, you had a lot going on in this one. You was charging quick, had a great run, managed to hold off for the race lead and pit stop. But then the pit strategy came into play. Winker just barely catches you. But at any point, did you think you were going to run him down and try to fight him out there going out of pit exit? What up, Chris? How you doing, buddy? No, I knew as soon as I he as soon as he got me out exiting the pits, I could have raced him down there before coming back in the track. But you know, I wanted to play it safe. I knew when he got in front of me that uh, it was over. I could these these cars, you can't pass them. You certainly can, indeed. But I mean, man, you still for everything you had to work for and you had to fight for. I gotta believe you really. We're very well aware and very well executed on at least trying. And now I ended up saying that because you got a second place finish. And considering you won the season championship last time out, I got to believe this is going to be a big career booster here for you. Yeah, I'm starting off better in points than I did the last season. I finished, I believe, 13th in the last Cal's Baby race. So, yeah, it was a nice, clean race. But like I said, I you can't pass on these dang cars. Man, this sucks. Certainly not indeed. But, I mean, nevertheless, though, as we complete this one out tonight and don't have to worry about the plate tracks anymore, uh, who do you want to thank here tonight? And, uh, anybody got you in victory lane? Yeah, I want to thank you for the great broadcast. Uh, all the admins, Chantel, you, and I believe Robert Clinton. Thank all the sponsors, uh, LBT Palette, Hot Wraps, Gearhead, GTR Simulator, which is good. I got me one of them GTR Simulators, Buck Key Kicker, and Epi GPC. And I want to thank my dad, Arliss, out there, and my son, who watch, and my wife, who always watches me and gives me encouragement and praying for her to get better. She got, you know, what's going on, so. Well, I hope, like we said earlier today, man, we uh, we wish you the best of luck and hope that everything is going to be okay. And on behalf of all PT and TV, I think I speak for myself and everyone that I say we have you our thoughts and our prayers tonight as we go to sleep for you and your family. Well, thank you, buddy. You all take care Absolutely. of yourselves. Absolutely. Robert Dudley, congratulations again on second place finish. We'll see you next time out, man. Ladies and gentlemen, Robert D D Dudleyville Dudley, your third place, your second place finisher here tonight in that number 49. And then finally, your third place finisher here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Jeffrey Oaks. And Oaksy, you know, you've had some strong runs and strong series here at Talladega. Obviously, you got a win here at Talladega in the truck series not too long ago, but. Man, you seem to have something up with these plate tracks here when it comes to running any series out here. What's what's your key strategy there? Uh, I, I'm not real sure. Patience. Um, you know, it's all about when to go. Like these cars are so hard to pass. I'm sure everybody else that was in here tonight touched on that. And you really got to have somebody that's going at the same time with you with the same momentum. Because even if you get a half a car break, you're not going to complete the pass. And so it's real tough and you just gotta you gotta see which lines are moving and get lucky and pick the right line at the right time i think you certainly do indeed but i mean you certainly to time everything out kind of figure it out just a little bit but i'll ask you though with uh, the last run there you had a little bit of company there with the newcomer and bullock did any time did you think he was going to try and actually push you help push you up there into the top spot or did you think it was just going to be a fight between you two for the rest of the race well, no, I mean, Bullock ran a good race all, like, everybody that was up around the top five, top seven all night, like, they, 
they seemed to be running pretty good and could hold their line. So I didn't feel nervous around any of them. They all did really well. And uh, Dan and I had a chance to break them top two up. And then I thought, like, it could have been him, Miglin, and I battling for the lead because we got that run, and he decided to stay low with them instead of stick to the outside. And uh, so then it was a kind of regroup of five laps to go, and luckily I got back there behind Cindy, and we made a hell of a run on that last lap. And I know we both passed a couple positions to improve our finishing spot there in that last lap, so that was good. Absolutely, indeed. And ended up getting you into that top three here and your team and helping out with some of the – folks as well there so nevertheless though my friend you have done a great job and done a great series here and for pedal metal racing league and ptm tv to showcase so i gotta ask you my friend as you sign off who do you want to thank you for this one uh my wife for supporting me um even though i uh tested positive for covid on wednesday she still supports me and going out and doing what i feel i need to do and i appreciate that um you up there in the booth you do a great job and uh, everything that this league is doing, they're working. They're always working hard to keep sponsors, get sponsors, get members. That goes a long way. So I appreciate all that. And I appreciate all our new sponsors coming on board. It's Cup Series. Let's go get it. You yes, certainly indeed. Jeffrey Oaks, congratulations, my friend. See you next time out in Chicagoland. Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, your third place finisher here tonight down at Pit Road. That is Jeffrey Oaks. In the number 20, and ladies and gentlemen, that is going to wrap it up here tonight for our first race of the season. What a way to kick it off, my friends. We're heading to Chicagoland next week, and we're going to see some more action here with the Pedal of the Metal Racing League crew. We have more action coming your way tomorrow night with Pushing Limits. But first, real quick, a big shout-out goes to our good friends at GTR Simulator, at D-Dub Button Boxes, by the Butt Kicker Company, Gearhead Coffee, Ooze Motorsports, LPT Pallet, FEGPC.net, Matt Mills Racing Team, Man's Maintenance, Berry Town Cleaners, and Paul's Raps. And to all you fans at home that tuned in and watched this with us here, whether we're on our Facebook Live or you watched it later on on YouTube, from the bottom of our hearts, thank you for tuning in. And we certainly hope you'll enjoy the next show and the next running here. From all of us here at PT Race TV, we are signing out for the night. Stay tuned for more action. Like and follow us up on Facebook and our Twitter and Instagram. And subscribe to our YouTube to catch all the action when it comes. We will see you next time when the green flag flies here on our show.